Hello and welcome back to Digital Assets Daily. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in your corner of the world. Ripple aims to monitor the XRP ledger for compliance with U.S. regulations. Ripple has posted a job ad looking for a BSA research analyst to monitor activity on the XRPL. The San Francisco-based company continues to expand and has approximately 20 open positions. Ripple seeks compliance with the U.S. regulations, and in that regard, the posted position by Ripple seeks a professional who can monitor and investigate activity on the XRPL. In that way, unusual activity sanctioned by the BSA should be detected. The analyst is intended to do a day-to-day -day monitoring on the XRPL of the activity, and he or she must be trained to investigate and analyze transactions. Remarkably, earlier this year, Ripple launched a website where users can make reports of unusual activity. Their users can report scams, phishing websites, concerns related to possible BSA violations, and any potentially illegal activity on the website. However, Ripple also clarifies the following. It is important to understand that Ripple does not own the XRP ledger, and the users of the XRP ledger are not customers of Ripple. Therefore, Ripple does not have the power to reverse transactions, even in the case of a reported financial loss, as an example of theft. In the next article, David Schwartz speaks on the validity of claiming spark tokens and safety of xrp holders and that was pretty much something i was personally waiting for to hear to see if they were going to get involved from the ripple executive team on clarifying the safety and security of this transaction the cto the chief technical officer at ripple david schwartz has commented on the validity of claiming spark tokens at flare network and the safety of xrp holders this comment came in response to a supposed XRP community member's concerns over Ripple's failure to comment on the trending development. After Flare Networks reported that over 5,400 accounts holding a total of 295 million XRP are ready to claim Spark tokens. On the next article, the DHS braces for a potential EMP attack as presidential election nears. And the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, DHS, released a new report warning about a potential electromagnetic pulse, EMP, against the U.S. DHS's warning published Thursday, September 2nd, or about 60 days until the U.S. election on November 3rd, indicates that there are evolving threats against the American homeland, most recently highlighting efforts to combat an electromagnetic pulse attack which could disrupt the electrical grid and potentially damage electronics. The department released an EMP status report via the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, the CISA, that said the key actions to address known EMP-related vulnerabilities to critical infrastructure. EMP, the Electromagnetic Pulse Program Status Report, is in accordance with the Executive Order 13865, the Department of Homeland Security DHS through CISA and in coordinates with the interagency is taking key actions to address known EMP related vulnerabilities to critical infrastructure. And that again, whereas we continue to say, if you have your currencies on an exchange, you may want to consider putting them somewhere safe and secure in a cold storage wallet. Any additional safety and security, again, is what it is. On the next article of discussion, the executive order on establishing the National Quantum Initiative Advisory Committee. The only reason I'm bringing up this article is because as we have the released with Google and IBM, the quantum computing and the quantum computers and then you have the quantum financial system for the new financial system and this is just showing they're continuing moving forward on the next article brazil's chief central banker says the national digital currency could be ready by 2022 
The president of Brazil's central bank thinks the country's national digital currency will be ready for launch by 2022 at a Bloomberg promoted event, the Banco Central BC. President Robert Campos Nito said that two years from now, Brazil will have the infrastructure for interoperable instant payments and an international convertible and credible currency required for a central bank digital currency, the CBDC. Next article, London fintech Satoshi Pay reveals how they've leveraged blockchain or DLT to process real-time micropayments for online publishers. So basically, again, everywhere you see happening with XLM is very similar to what's happening with XRP. The London-based Satoshi Pay, a fintech firm that aims to provide fast and affordable payment solutions, has revealed that it has reached a key milestone in establishing its blockchain-enabled clearing platform as a new standard for cross-border transactions. And again, you can say that, flip it, and vice versa with XLM XRP. The Satoshi Pay team notes that as of August 20, they've handled more than one million euros in digital payments for their publishing clients. Satoshi Pay states, during 2019 and 2020, both of our strategic partners in the publishing industry supported the acceptance of Satoshi Pay as a payment method by running numerous campaigns. These campaigns made parts of the publisher's subscription content available via micropayments or instant premium passes. And they added, Axel Springer, a publisher, offers sponsored access to their real-time incident mapping service to Tort, part of a German newspaper, BILD. Satoshi Pay's platform takes care of instant payment processing between users and Axel Springer, with spikes of several thousand payments per hour during peak periods. And Sergey Evdovkimov, the senior digital solutions architect at Axel Springer claims that they've seen steady demand from their users for instant access to their Tetort web service through Satoshi Pay's payment platform. Evdov Kimov added that for them as a publisher experiencing the ability of blockchain or distributed ledger tech DLT to help process real-time payments under pre-programmed conditions gives them important insights into this new emerging standard for international transactions. The Satoshi Pay team notes integrating Satoshi Pay's instant payments creates a win-win for publisher and user. Publishers receive an additional tool for monetizing web traffic, potentially expanding their subscriber base, and users can conveniently try out the premium experience by making micropayments. And the Stellar Development Foundation, SDF, has reportedly been supporting Satoshi Pay's content partners via free credits for platform users, which are offered in Stellar Lumens XLM, the native digital currency of the Stellar blockchain network. The Satoshi Pay team states in their blog post, not only does this allow an easy start for users, but it generates initial micropayment revenues for publishers and demonstrates one of the major advantages of the decentralized Stellar network, near instant and extremely low cost payments settled within five seconds for a fraction of a cent in transaction costs. A next article, we have VeChain and BMW's Verify Car project gets new details unveiled. The VeChain and BMW partnership has been a hot one in the coming altcoin news and one to highlight for the VET cryptocurrency. An article published a few weeks ago highlights the link between VeChain and BMW's partnership and more details on the Verify Car solution to track fraud and manipulation of secondhand cars. As we can see, the partnership between the automotive giant and VeChain have bared fruit so far and continues to do so, following the completion of the BMW program known as the Startup Garage. VeChain appears to be expanding its relationship with the automotive giant. First unveiled in 2019 of April, the link between VeChain and BMW's Verify Car system lies in the ability of the cryptocurrency to bring transparency to the model and track potential fraud. Based on the VeChain Thor blockchain, the solution introduces decentralized apps in a whole new manner. From last year's announcement, we can see that Verify Car is designed as a way to connect important vehicle data to each vehicle in a tamper-proof manner via the VeChain Thor blockchain.
The former announcement shows that the focus is on protection against manipulation of mileage repairs, the workshop book, as well as the rights to publish services in addition to the car, such as navigation maps, concierge services, etc. A recent post on Reddit by one user shows more details of the project, and the user's intentions were to search for updates of the project in the VeChain News, which is best seen from one article that he found published in July on one German website. The article highlights the progress of the project and clarifies that BMW will not store any of the unique data collected from the vehicle in the VeChain public blockchain. Instead, the blockchain will be used to create a fingerprint which verifies the authenticity of data while all data will remain in the owner's vehicle. BMW will not save any clear data about its cars on the public V-chain. The group only wants to reference this via a digital fingerprint. This clear data stays within the user's car. By accessing the app, the user decides who he would like to pass on which data, e.g. a workshop or a potential buyer. The recipients can compare the data with the digital fingerprints or reference stamps on the VeChain blockchain if clear data and the reference on the blockchain match and the recipient knows that the data is authentic. And according to BMW, the manipulation of vehicle data in Germany alone costs around 3,000 euro per unit sold. And I personally would not mind that in my car to take it to the workshop as we did our routine maintenance or basically if I were to purchase that I would think that would be an excellent thing for vehicles to actually have and in the next article the VeChain attends the blockchain conference with Bosch and EU Commission the second Cyprus blockchain summit will take place digitally to discuss potentially of to discuss potential of technology and its impact on how companies do business the conference will be held digitally on September 10th of 2020 so basically in 2 days they're going to have the next conference under the name Potential Opportunities and Barriers of Blockchain Technology, the second Cyprus Blockchain Summit will take place digitally. Aimed at forward-thinking organizations, the summit will aim to discuss the potential of this technology for professionals on the banking sector, insurance, financial services, human resources, and supply chain management, amongst others. The event is organized by the IMF, the largest business knowledge transfer organization in Cyprus, according to its website, and dedicated to creating and organizing similar events. IMG has organized the second Cyprus Blockchain Summit with Cyprus Blockchain Technologies and Cyprus Blockchain Association, the CBA, and the private association Cyprus Computer Society, CCS. The conference aims at the following to help inform businesses of the latest trends and developments in blockchain and how it can be used to enable new capabilities. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you with a final thought. Good idea to start with coffee. I know it's simple, but I love coffee. And I've had many great ideas at Starbucks getting a fresh mocha. All right, guys, I hope you're having a great day. Remember, this is not financial advice. It is for entertainment purposes only. And much love to each and every one of you. Thank you for your support. We will catch you in the next one.